Welcome to week 14 of Algebra 1 with Mrs. Weibark. This week we will still be discussing inequalities. We will be learning about graphing inequalities in two variables and solving systems of inequalities. We encounter inequalities in the real world all the time. For example, when exercising, it is recommended to aim for a target heart rate that is between 70% and 85% of our maximum heart rate. You can find your maximum heart rate by taking 220 minus your age. So for example, using myself, my maximum heart rate would be 220 minus 46. So my maximum heart rate would be 174. To find 85% of my maximum heart rate, I would multiply 0.85 times 174. And if I graph this, I get this upper blue line on this graph. 70% of my maximum heart rate would be 0.7 times 174, giving me this lower blue line on the graph. So this shaded area represents the target heart rate. So at 46 years old, I can look at the graph here, and I would be just past 45. So at 46, my target heart rate would be between 120 and approximately 146 beats per minute. We are going to start by taking a look at inequalities in two variables. At the top of your notes on page 1, there's an example which we are going to follow along and graph. Graph the inequality y is greater than 2 thirds x minus 3. I remember this. To graph the inequality y is greater than 2 thirds x minus 3, first graph the boundary line y equals 2 thirds x minus 3. The y-intercept is negative 3. Plot 0, negative 3, then use the slope to find another point on the line. When graphing an inequality, we graph this the same way we would graph the line y equals 2 thirds x minus 3. So they've started with a y-intercept of negative 3, and they used a slope of 2 thirds to be rise 2, run 3 to find a second point. They are then going to draw a line connecting the points. Because this is an inequality, and the symbol is greater than but not equal, we will use a dashed line to represent this inequality. When you draw a line through these points, you have to use a dashed line because the inequality is greater than. That's right, Roxy. That's how we show that the points on the line are not solutions to the inequality. And what about the shading on the graph? Where does that go? To decide whether to shade above or below the line, choose a test point. We'll use 0, 0 and see whether it makes the inequality true. Since 0 is greater than 0 minus 3, 0, 0 is in the solution set. To test this area for shading, what they did is they substituted the point 0, 0. So they let x be 0 and y be 0. They then simplified and came up with 0 is greater than negative 3, which is true. Thus, the point 0, 0 is part of the solution. That means we'll shade on the same side as the test point 0, 0. That's the region that contains our test point. Any point above the line is a solution to the linear inequality. <laughs> Just to make sure you heard what they said, any point in this shaded area is a solution to this inequality. So I could test the point 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, negative 3. Any of these points in the blue area would satisfy this inequality. Thus, they are all solutions. We're now going to take a look at systems of inequalities. There's a place on the bottom of page one of your notes for the following definitions. A system of inequalities is a set of two or more inequalities with the same variables graphed in the same coordinate plane. This is very much like when we dealt with systems of linear equations. 
The solution of a system of inequalities is the set of all points that can be substituted for the variables to make both inequalities true. And as you saw in the last example, when we graph an inequality, we get a shaded area. So the solution to a system is the area on the graph that is represented by the shaded regions. When completed, this is what page one of your notes should look like. If you need to, take a moment and fill these in. We are now going to move to the top of page two of your video notes. Let's review what we know about linear inequalities. To solve a linear inequality of two variables, you start by graphing the boundary line. Then decide whether the boundary line should be dashed or solid. Finally, pick a point on either side of the line and substitute the x and y values into the inequality to determine which side of the line to shade. Now we'll add another layer to the problem. Instead of graphing the solutions to one linear inequality, we're going to graph the solutions to a system of linear inequalities. Notice that this first inequality is the same one that we just graphed on page one of your notes. So we will be reusing that inequality and adding a second inequality to the same graph in order to create a system. And how will we do that? Just as we solve systems of linear equations by graphing, we will graph both inequalities on one coordinate plane, then determine whether the graphs of the solution sets have any points in common. We've already graphed the first inequality. To graph the second, draw the solid line y is equal to negative x plus 4. The test point, 0, 0, makes the inequality false. So shade on the opposite side of the test point. Now look closely at the graph. All the points above the first boundary line are solutions to the first inequality. All the points on or above the second line are solutions to the second inequality. So all those points that are in both regions must be solutions to the system, right? Yes. For this system of linear inequalities, the solution set is an entire region. Since there are an infinite number of points in the region, the system has an infinite number of solutions. Those solutions are shown in the double shaded region. We found that region by identifying the intersection of the two different shaded areas. In question one of your guided notes, this is the first example on page two that you will graph. Look for the symbol for example one and follow along on your notes. Graph the solution set of the system of linear inequalities. y is less than x plus 2. y is greater than negative 2x plus 3. Graph the dashed line y equals x plus 2. The test point 0, 0 makes the inequality true, since 0 is less than 2. Shade on the same side of the line as 0, 0. Next, graph the dashed line y equals negative 2x plus 3. The test point 0, 0 makes this inequality false, since 0 is not greater than 3. Shade on the opposite side of the test point. Just to recap what they've done, in this first inequality, the y-intercept is 2. So they started by putting a point at 2. Since we have 1x, the slope here is 1. So the line goes up 1 over 1. And they've used a dashed line because y is less than but not equal to. So that gives us this dashed blue line. When they tested the point 0, 0, they got 0 is less than 2, which is true. So they've shaded in blue all this area that includes the point 0. They then graphed the second inequality, which has a y-intercept of 3, which is over here at y is 3. The slope is negative 2, so they went down 2, 
over 1 and drew a dashed yellow line because again y was greater but not equal. When they tested the point 0, 0, we had 0 for y is greater than 3, which is false, so they could not include the point 0, 0. Therefore, they graphed in light blue all the area over here. Remember that when you graph an inequality, that line actually divides the coordinate plane in half. The trick is figuring out which half is the solution set for that particular inequality. We can test the point 0, 0 or any other point. We often use 0, 0 just because it's easiest. The solution set to the system of linear inequalities is shown by the double shaded region. If needed, take a moment to catch up on your graph and do the shading to show the solution to the system of equations. I have also asked three, or I'm sorry, I have also asked about two other points. I would like you to determine is the point 3, 3 a solution to this system? To do that, I find the point 3, 3, which means I go over 3, up 3. Since this point is in the area shaded by both solution sets, Yes, it is a solution. The second point that I asked about is the point negative 3, 3. So I start at 0, I go backwards 3 and up 3, and I get a point that's not in any of the solution sets. So no, negative 3, 3 is not a solution. We'll now move on to example number 2. In question two of your guided notes, graph the system of linear inequalities. Y is greater than or equal to negative 3x plus 4. Y is greater than x minus 2. The first inequality has a solid boundary line, since the inequality sign is greater than or equal to. Graph the line y equals negative 3x plus 4. The test point, 0, 0, makes the inequality false, so shade the opposite side of the test point. To graph the second inequality, graph the line y equals x minus 2. Use a dashed line since the inequality symbol is greater than. Since the test point, 0, 0, makes the inequality true, shade the same side as the test point. The solution set to the system of linear inequalities is the region common to both solution sets, the double shaded region. You should now have page two of your video notes completed. If necessary, take a moment to complete the page and catch up. In question three of your guided notes, graph the solution set to the system of linear inequalities. X plus two Y is greater than or equal to negative two x plus 2y is less than 6. The boundary line of the first inequality passes through negative 2, 0 and 0, negative 1. The boundary line is solid. Since 0, 0 makes the inequality true, shade the same side as the test point 0, 0. The inequality x plus 2y is greater than or equal to negative 2 is written in standard form. Therefore, I would use the intercepts for x and y to graph this line. If I let y be 0, I am left with x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So this gives me an x-intercept of negative 2, 0, and the point would be right here. I then allow x to be 0, which gives me 2y is greater than or equal to negative 2. I would divide both sides by 2, leaving me with y is greater than or equal to negative 1. That gives me a y-intercept of 0, negative 1. So that's where I would draw the line. Because this symbol is greater than or equal, I'm using a solid line. I would graph the next equation similarly. My x-intercept would be 6, because if I allow y to be 0, x is less than 6. To find my y-intercept, I would let x be 0. I would be left with 2y 
is less than 6, so I would divide both sides by 2, and I will find that y is less than 3. The boundary line of the second inequality passes through 6, 0, and 0, 3. The boundary line is dashed. The test point 0, 0 makes the inequality true, so shade the same side. The solution set is the set of all points that are solutions to both linear inequalities. The solution set is the double shaded region. Wow, that's cool, a parallel strip. When we graph parallel lines, we can get several types of solutions. One is a case in which one of the lines is shaded below, one is shaded above, and you do get a parallel strip right down the middle that gives you all of the solution points. In question four of your guided notes, graph the solution set to the system of linear inequalities. Y is less than negative 2x minus 4. 4x plus 2y is greater than 2. Use the slope-intercept method to graph the boundary line of the first inequality. The boundary line is dashed. The test point 0, 0 does not satisfy the inequality. They have graphed the first inequality using y equals mx plus b. The y-intercept is negative 4, and the slope is negative 2, which means I go down 2 over 1. They will graph the second line using the standard form by finding the x and y-intercepts. So shade the opposite side of the test point. Use the intercepts to graph the boundary line of the second inequality. The dashed boundary line passes through 1 half 0 and 0 1. The test point 0 0 makes the inequality false, so shade the opposite side of the test point. The two boundary lines are parallel and the shaded regions never intersect. This system of linear inequalities has no solution. This is the other unique situation that happens when you have parallel lines as a system of inequalities. Sometimes the shading is below one line and above the other line. We end up with no solution because there are no areas in which the shaded regions overlap. You should now have page three of your notes completed. So if you have not caught up, take a minute and do so. In review, when solving a system of inequalities, we first graph each inequality. We use a dashed or solid line to represent the inequality. We then shade above or below the line as indicated by checking a test point, often 0, 0. And the solution is the set of points included in the overlapping shaded areas. Examples 5 and 6 on your handout are not included on this video. However, you may complete them on your own for extra credit. Thank you for watching this Wybark production.